Around 350 million years ago, during the late Devonian period, the Earth was just beginning to take its first steps towards familiarity. Oceans dominated much of the planet's surface, with the immense Panthalassic Ocean covering a great deal of the globe. But conditions on land were starting to resemble those we see today. Inland, dense, towering forests of horsetails and ferns, entirely absent of birds or flying reptiles, were present. Instead of the echoing calls of these archosaurs, giant insects filled the air, and the first terrestrial vertebrates, primitive, amphibian-like tetrapods, were just beginning to venture from freshwater streams onto dry ground. While few land-dwelling creatures grew beyond a meter and a half, the oceans teemed with gigantic and diverse forms of life. Evolution had produced a staggering variety of fish, from heavily armored placoderms to the first cartilaginous fishes and the countless other forms in between. This burst of aquatic diversity is why the Devonian is often called the Age of Fishes. And among these many marine marvels, one predator stands out as the era's most iconic. Dunkleosteus terrelli, a massive, armoured placoderm whose terrifying jaws have inspired artists and directors alike. In this episode, we'll take a closer look at the biology, behaviour and discovery of this extraordinary fish and explore the cutting-edge research that's reshaping what we know about this marine titan. Join us on a journey back in time to encounter Dunkleosteus, the ancient undersea apex predator built like a living tank. Dunkleosteus belonged to a group of prehistoric fish known as placoderms, a name that translates from Greek to mean plate skin. As the name suggests, these creatures were defined by their thick bony armor plating, which covered much of the head, and in some cases, the entire body. Placoderms were incredibly varied, thriving for nearly 100 million years, from the late Silurian to the end of the Devonian. Many looked nothing like any fish alive today, except perhaps the few remaining species of lungfish or chylocanth. They reached peak diversity in the Devonian period and were among the first vertebrates to explore the vast open ocean, conquering the ecosystems in which they lived. Some were wide and flattened, resembling armoured rays, while others adapted to freshwater rivers and lakes, staying quite small, only a few inches long in some cases. In the open oceans, however, some placoderms grew enormous, evolving into either massive filter feeders or fearsome marine predators. Enter Dunkleosteus as a massive marine apex predator. Dunkleosteus has become an unmistakable symbol of the Devonian and a fan favorite among prehistoric creatures, largely due to its once believed gigantic size. The first fossils were described in 1875, and early interpretations suggested the fish reached lengths of 4.5 to 5.5 meters. Even that would make it one of the largest fish of its time, but in 1966, new estimates pushed that length to a staggering nine meters. Over the following decades, these size estimates continued to shift slightly, and in 2009, researchers Anderson and Westney proposed that Dunkleosteus could have reached 10 meters, ranking it among the largest apex predators in Earth's early oceans. That nine to 10 meter figure became widely accepted until 2023 when new evidence dramatically revised its estimated size to just over four meters. While this was a major shift, the updated figure has gained broad acceptance and depictions of this new Dunkleosteus are now commonplace in modern paleo art. Despite the size reduction, Dunkleosteus remains one of the most formidable and iconic predators of the Paleozoic seas. Just one look at its skull reveals an unparalleled glimpse into its life. Exceptionally preserved fossils show the dense dermal armor covering its head, designed to protect the skull during feeding or encounters with rivals. At its thickest, near the back of the head, this bony shield was up to two or three inches thick. K2 
capable of withstanding massive impacts as the fish's jaws clamped down on prey. The armor was actually part of the skull itself and would have appeared much more streamlined in life, perhaps slightly less like the monstrous looking fossil displays than some people might like. While the head is well preserved in several specimens, the rest of the skeleton has proven to be rare in fossil deposits. To reconstruct its full body, scientists have turned to closely related arthrodia placoderms like Cocosteus, a much smaller fish, but one whose complete fossils have helped inform our understanding of Dunkleosteus' general body shape. However, this reliance on relatives has likely played a part in the ever-shifting estimates of its true size. Modern artists' reconstructions of Dunkleosteus show a powerfully built, deep-bodied fish that looks deceptively shark-like. It likely had a tall dorsal fin, large pectoral fins, and a strong, crescent-shaped tail that allowed it to slice through the water with speed and force unmatched in the Devonian seas. The head armor extended over the jaws and face, reaching back toward the dorsal fin, forming a kind of internal impact helmet. Its small, beady eyes were positioned at the front of its head to track moving prey, and evidence of pigment cells suggests it was likely dark above and lighter below. This is a classic camouflage pattern known as countershading, perfect for hunting in the depths, where light can be broken up and disguised depending on where you are in the water column. Great white sharks utilize the same coloration techniques when ambushing prey at the surface of the water, with dark coloration across the top of their bodies. Perhaps the most remarkable feature of Dunkleosteus' skeleton lies inside its mouth. Instead of traditional teeth as we know them, it had a system of interlocking bony blades, extensions of its skull and jaw bones that acted like shears, slicing through flesh and bone with terrifying efficiency. These bone plates formed a deadly set of natural scissors and studies have shown Dunkleosteus could bite with a force between four and 7,000 newtons. For a fish that isn't a shark, this is an extraordinary degree of pressure to be capable of applying on another animal, making Dunkleosteus a highly adapted apex predator, even without the titanic size it was once thought to possess. The first fossils of Dunkleosteus weren't discovered by a professional paleontologist, but by an enthusiast named Jay Terrell. A frequent visitor to the cliffs around Lake Erie, near his hometown of Sheffield Lake, Ohio, Terrell often searched for fossils in the region's rich Devonian rock beds. In 1867, during one of these excursions, he uncovered the remains of a massive fish, fossils, that he later donated to John Strong Newbury of the Ohio Geological Survey. Newbury studied the material closely and initially classified the animal under the name Denictus herzeri. But this decision didn't stick for long. As more fossils surfaced in the same region, including additional large Devonian fish, it became apparent that distinct species needed to be established to differentiate the finds. The species Denictus terelli was introduced, this time to honor Terrell himself for his discovery. It wasn't until 1956 that the fish gained its current name. That year, French paleontologist Jean-Pierre Lehman examined the fossils himself and noticed key differences between existing Denictus fossils and Terrell's specimen. Concluding that it deserved its own genus, Lehman assigned it a new name, Dunkleosteus. This was in recognition of David Dunkel, a prominent paleontologist and former curator of vertebrate paleontology at the Cleveland Museum of Natural History, known for his work on fossil fishes from across the Paleozoic era. The suffix osteus comes from the Greek word for bone, so Dunkleosteus terelli can be loosely translated as Dunkel and Terrell's bone. While Dunkleosteus terelli is the largest and most iconic species in the genus, it's not the only one. Fossils from this group have been found far beyond Ohio and even outside of the wider North America. Though Dunkleosteus terelli 
is mostly known from the central United States. Other Dunkleosteia species have been discovered in Belgium, Morocco, Poland, Russia, and parts of the northeastern US, showing that the genus was geographically widespread and varied in form. To date, 10 species have been proposed under the Dunkleosteus genus, but only four are currently recognized as valid by the scientific community, Dunkleosteus terelli, Ravery, Tudorensis, and Ambliodoratus. The shear-like blades inside Dunkleosteus's jaws leave little doubt about its role as a dominant predator. Its jaw structure was highly advanced for its time, operating through a four-bar linkage system that connected the upper jaw, lower mandible, jaw muscles, and the thoracic shield at the back of the skull. This complex mechanism allowed the fish to snap its jaws open and shut in roughly 50 milliseconds, fast enough to engulf prey in a single, explosive motion. Some modern fishes, such as groupers, are capable of doing this today, and when they feed, it would seem that their prey disappears in the literal blink of an eye. As Dunkleosteus's mouth opened at high speed, it created a powerful suction force, pulling in nearby animals with ease. Once inside, the bony shears would slice through flesh, armor, or carapace with unrivaled efficiency. The bite pressure alone was likely enough to pierce the armor of other placoderms, fish which had specifically evolved to withstand powerful bites. Even more remarkably, these jaw blades were self-sharpening, constantly maintaining a razor edge as the fish used them over time. This adaptation made Dunkleosteus an expert hunter of armored prey, including ammonites, fish, and hard-shelled arthropods. Its appetite, however, didn't end there. Fossil finds have revealed teeth from Oridus, a cartilaginous, shark-like fish found among Dunkleosteus remains. This suggests that Dunkleosteus may have preyed upon and consumed potentially dangerous animals, regurgitating the indigestible parts afterward. The fact that Dunkleosteus could catch and eat cartilaginous fish like Orodus, which were fast, pelagic swimmers, hints that this placoderm may have been far quicker and much more agile than once believed. Oridus was an open ocean predator itself, living in the pelagic zone and relying on speed to hunt smaller fish. To successfully capture such a swift target, Dunkleosteus would likely have needed to utilize significant bursts of speed in the open water. Exactly how fast it could swim remains uncertain, as fossils of its tail and fin structures are still limited. But the clues we do have paint the picture of a surprisingly nimble hunter. The reproductive strategy of Dunkleosteus has also been the subject of ongoing research. While direct evidence remains elusive, there's growing support for the idea that it may have been a pseudo-live bearer, similar to certain species of modern shark. In this way, fertilization would have occurred internally with embryos developing inside the mother and hatching shortly before or after birth. Other placoderms have been found with what appears to be an umbilical structure, suggesting this kind of reproductive method might have been more common than previously assumed. Once born, juvenile Dunkleosteus likely stayed in protected, shallow waters, safe from larger predators, and possibly even from other adult Dunkleosteus from which cannibalism has been considered. As they grew larger and more capable of self-defense, these young fish would have ventured into deeper, more open marine environments, where prey was abundant. Fossil evidence also shows that life for Dunkleosteus was far from peaceful. At least one specimen, catalogued as CMN H5302, displays clear signs of traumatic injury puncture marks that match the bite pattern of another Dunkleosteus. These wounds suggest violent encounters, possibly the result of territorial disputes, mating conflicts, or even cannibalism. Given the crushing bite force these fish could deliver, such battles would have been brutal, perhaps to the death. Although the thick skull armor likely prevented fatal damage in some cases, the trauma would have been painful for the loser more often than not.
So, that was a rundown of Dunkleosteus, one of the most fearsome prehistoric fishes of the Paleozoic seas. While Dunkleosteus is not quite as large as scientists once imagined it to be, this fish holds a special place in the hearts of many paleontology enthusiasts and is without a doubt one of the most iconic animals of the Devonian. With any luck, scientists will soon be able to unearth more of this fish's remains so an even clearer image of what it looked like in life can be obtained.